Welcome back to my little channel. Today's topic is something that's not quite unlike the one that I did on the churches. I have to admit, I once again, I'm going to talk about the fact how it seems that we in the West have more or less decided that we don't have a right to exist. Now, obviously, I talked about our societal heritage and Christianity in a previous video. So why am I saying this again? I'm not going to talk about Christianity again. No, no, I'm not. See, there are two things that you do to destroy a civilization. Well, actually, there are a few things you do to destroy a civilization. And the first thing you do is to make them feel insignificant. But once you've done that, and you started attacking the history of that religion, you start attacking its women and its children. And if you get away with that, if they let you, until they stand up to fight back, you have effectively destroyed a society. Now that sounds really, really hyperbolic, doesn't it? But imagine this. If your woman only feels safe whilst they're being protected by anyone but you, what do you think your value in that society will be? And funny enough, in the Western world, and especially in Europe, we have created a system where speaking out against certain things will get you, as a man, attacked. Because sexual violence is a thing that only men do, apparently. And white men are the worst. Oh, by far they are the worst. So if you're a white man and you speak out against it, then you're just trying to deflect, aren't you? Funny enough, that rhetoric came from feminism. And it's indeed feminism that drives the stake into the heart of, well, male societies. With, as a direct result, that men in the Western world seem to have forgotten their task as protector of women and family. But you're not to say this, you're not to recognize this, you're not even to mention this. Because when you do, again, you're some kind of ist or phobe. So what happens next? Men stand down. They're no longer busy defending their children. They're no longer busy defending their women. So what will happen when that is allowed to become a thing? Well, then we get things like this. This is in England, the UK. Grooming epidemic as almost 19,000 children identified as sexual exploitation victims in England. All of these, or 99% of these, are white women. Well, white girls, really. And this has been going on for several years. I mean... Uh, I can still remember how Tommy Robinson was one of the first people to actually blow the lid on this. And the UK has done nothing but try to silence the good old man. Because he's an ist and a phobe, don't you know? But none of the things he said were untrue. So how come it's okay to attack him on his character, but we can't address what he's saying? This proves not only that there are groups doing this sort of thing, because yes, there are. And I know it's nice and easy to say, well, look at these Muslims, blah, 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 blah. Because the grooming gangs in the UK are mostly Afghani, no, sorry, Pakistani, Pakistani Muslims. Uh, I forgot the name of the 
shape of Islam in those groups. I, I think it's Deobandi, but I can't remember. Are all Pakistani Muslims the problem? No, no, no. There are also Pakistani Muslims that recognize that this is going on and are asking the English society to please stand the fuck up and do something to protect their children because they came to England to be part of that society and that society is crumbling around them. How can you feel safe in a location where you can do just about anything and no one will stand up? Well, that's hyperbolic. People did stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And some people actually got a slap on their wrist for grooming. Fucking hell. I don't even know. They understand why they use the word grooming. It's not grooming. They raped them. They drugged them. They murdered them. And people get a slap on the wrist. They get a few years jail sentence. And only because of people like Tommy Robinson who kept pushing the matter because the police wanted to put it all away and no one should talk about it. People have actually been locked up to talk about it. Because how dare you bring this up? And I know it seems like it's just the UK. But um, the worst part is... Oh, I'm really good at this shit. It's not just the UK. In France, they are considering to create tougher laws. Now, this is a few years old. And why were they thinking about creating tougher laws? Because a court dropped the rape charge where the victim was an 11 year old girl. And what was the argument? Well, yeah, okay, so she got attacked. No, I'm not supposed to say attacked. She had sexual encounter with someone who was twice her age, but obviously she consented. What kind of protection are we giving our women? What kind of protection are we giving our children? Now, this is just one example of France. And I won't lie, it's, it's difficult to find similar stories as we saw in the UK and France. Is it because it's not happening in France? I'm not sure, to be honest. It could very well be that we don't see similar stories because the media and the police, police there have still been able to keep a lid on it, as they did in the UK. Because, mind you, if it weren't for a few actors, we wouldn't have known what was going on in the UK either. And I work in healthcare in the Netherlands. We don't call them grooming gangs in the Netherlands. We call them lover boys. Another nice term to pretend it's not a big deal. But what do lover boys do? They trap girls into abusive relationship and have them raped. So it's not something that just happened in the UK. I know for a fact that this happened in the Netherlands. Is it easy to find a lot of information about it? Yeah, right. No, it's not. The same is true for Germany, Finland. Um, if we look at Finland, an Afghan migrant previously convicted of sex crime sentenced to just five years for more sex crimes, including on a child. But yeah, no, I mean, why would we protect our women? Why would we protect our children? It gets so far that even if we look at Italy, where they have been fighting the whole we don't want refugees here anymore for quite a while. And why are they fighting it? Because of shit like this. Now, can you recognize the pattern because this is not much unlike as what happened in the UK. Yeah, but these, these criminals are Nigerian. Yeah, you know, it's not that all Muslims are the problem. It's all criminals are the problem. We shouldn't just say, oh, well, yeah, but in the UK, you were Muslims, therefore all Muslims. The example in Finland, that's an Afghani man, therefore Muslims. No, it's criminals. 
Now, with the Afghani and Pakistani, you can say, well, yeah, but they have the culture and this and that and blah, blah, blah. You know what? This may be true, but then we should not let them in. Now, should we? But there are genuine people from Pakistan, Afghanistan, in this case, Nigeria, that came here to seek freedom and refuge. And we're showing them that we're not even willing to protect our own women and children. I am curious and I'm really interested in hearing how people think we can create safety for people if we're not even willing to protect our own. Now I'll have links downstairs, you can read these articles. And seriously, try and find more information on this. It is scary. And to me, it's absolutely mind-boggling that the left seems to be, and I, the left is such an unfair nomer in this, but people on the left side of politics seem to be totally okay with this. Where are the feminist crying outrage that girls and women are being abused like this? In the UK, there has actually been politicians telling these girls to shut the fuck up because they're harming cultural diversity. What the hell is wrong with us? Why are we allowing this to happen? But don't get me wrong, this is not a call to violence against refugees and people from other cultures. This is a call to action towards our own. It's our politicians. It's our police force. It's ourselves. We need to stand up. It's not about attacking people from another culture that come here to seek refuge. It's against them abusing what we have. Because let's be honest, most refugees didn't come here to abuse the system. So let's not try to brush them all. It's negative. Let's try to recognize that we need to stand up to protect our own. Anyway, I'm trying to grow my channel, so I'm really curious if I did a good job, if you liked it. Um, criticism, as always, is more than welcome, and I look forward to hearing from you. If you have any ideas that you think I could do better, I would love to hear it. And I hope to see you all next time.